In this video, I'll talk about how to prevent cancer in dogs and the five steps to follow. Hi, I'm Dan Scott, canine nutrition and home remedy specialist. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button below to stay in touch with all the latest videos that I do. And feel free to comment or ask questions below. Hearing the news that your dog's been diagnosed with cancer is a bitter pill you hope never to have to swallow. I know, I've been there and it was painful losing the best friend I ever had. Today, half of all dogs will get cancer at some point and the conventional treatment of chemotherapy, just when a dog is at its most vulnerable, is an invasive act with a very low success rate that simply finishes off the dog in the most dreadful manner. Cruel really, but the pharmaceutical drug machine knows cancer is its gravy train. My latest pet parent customer faced a simple fact. Pay $8,000 for chemo and potentially 12 months grace, or set to work on a fresh food diet, cancer supplements, a large helping of love, and let's get the dog's immune system powered up to fight this disease on its own terms, and with good grace, enjoy a few healthy, joyful years. And with that said, the best cure for canine cancer is prevention. And this I know well, so buckle up and let's move your dog to higher ground where cancer never dwells. So what is cancer? How does it manifest? And why the heck is it growing out of control with so much focus and money put into cancer cure? Huge questions and depending on your constitution for accepting uncomfortable answers, I'll leave you with a few that may surprise you and then I'll leave it there because the word for today is prevention. Cancer is born when carcinogens damage DNA then wait for just the right moment to deliver the cancerous cells to a weakened host. And this is usually the tipping point in a dog's body that's been in a perpetual state of inflammation for years before the outbreak. I've researched dog health for 15 years and I can tell you that, and this is my own numbers, take it as you will, that 90% of dogs who get cancer all succumbed because of too many years spent ingesting the chemicals in kibble, soaking up the chemicals from flea and tick treatments and worm treatments, while battling the chemicals from over-vaccination and over-exposure to household and yard chemicals. It's cheap synthetic chemicals in just about everything today that's killing our dogs. And that's why cancer's growing out of control. There's been natural cures to cancer for decades, and one proven anecdotally is THC oil from the cannabis plant. But THC has been made illegal, so no one can get it and cure their dog's cancer quickly and efficiently. But with that said, let's look at five ways to prevent your dog being a statistic. And with things you can easily take action on that make a world of difference to your dog. Okay, number one. Time to get sensitive about what you buy and use in the house and around the yard. Think household detergents, deodorizers, surface cleaners, soaps and cleansers. There's hundreds of common household products and the chemicals inside them get inside your dog. Who, remember, is at floor level licking at the toxic residue while cleaning their feet or worse, actually licking the residue off their feet. Remember, I said before, the tipping point in a dog's body that's been in a perpetual state of inflammation for years before the outbreak of cancer, well, you simply never know where the cancer's come from or why it started, because it takes years of low-level inflammation before the cancer's spread and eventual detection. There are so many toxins in household cleaning supplies that if they were actually listed, you'd never touch them. And to think of those toxic ingredients going right into your dog's skin, lungs, liver and kidneys, and the outcome, cancer, sooner or later, to half of all dogs. So do your best, become proactive and start looking at the clean alternatives. They're animal friendly or make your own at home. And there's plenty of online recipes for safe household cleaners. And number two, in the yard, things don't get any better as we spray our lawns, weeds and woodwork. Remember, dogs are low to the ground and their nose gets into the glyphosate weed killer soaked undergrowth, licks at the newly protected wood fence panels, or licks their feet after walking on lawn care treatments. And scientific studies have proven the link between lawn care products and canine cancer. Again, and I know it can seem like a burden, but search out the natural ways to keep your yard as you want it, but without the toxins because they go right into your dog, and regardless of the marketing on the product's label, and yes, Roundup has been linked to cancer in humans, so what chance does your dog have? And number three, flea and tick and deworming products simply soak chemicals into your dog, and chemicals such as carcinogenic permethrin have been clearly linked to lung cancer and liver tumors in laboratory-tested animals. And again, it's the drip-drip effect over years of use that eventually leads to a cancer outbreak, 
There's excellent natural means to rid your dog of fleas or prevent them and I'll leave a link in the description below to a video on this. And number four, never give an unnecessary vaccine. Once an adult dog has responded to a core vaccine, research shows that the dog doesn't need any more. Instead of revaccinating, ask your vet to run a titter test to first see if your dog even needs that vaccine. Groundbreaking work done by veterinary immunologist Dr. Ronald Schultz studied all the major vaccines used on dogs. And in over a thousand dogs, every study he conducted gave the same conclusion every time. Vaccines for diseases like distemper and canine parvovirus, once administered to adult animals, provide lifetime immunity. Distemper provides 7 years by challenge and 15 years by serology. Parvovirus provides 7 years by challenge and 7 years by serology. And adenovirus provides 7 years by challenge and 9 years by serology. It was Dr. Schultz's work that led to the major veterinary associations to understand that core vaccines were protecting dogs and cats for life. So in 2003, they changed their revaccination guidelines. The AAHA and the AVMA did change their recommendations from annual to every three years. Not the biggest step needed, but a step in the right direction at least. So how do we protect our dogs and cats from infectious diseases while limiting the risk of vaccine damage? A simple blood test called a titter shows whether your dog is protected and if they need a follow-up vaccine. And a positive test result tells that your dog does have enough of the protective antibodies against the virus. Titter testing is a vital way to protect your dog's health from over-vaccination. And number five is keeping your dog's diet as healthy as possible. While the underlying cause of cancer is said to be uncertain, many years of research and practice lead me firmly to believe that there's no uncertainty at all, as chemically laden, inadequate nutrition has a disruptive impact on a dog's immune system that's cumulative over time. And kibble contains many additives, and it's pretty harsh on your dog's system, leading to long-term chronic inflammation, and you know now where that eventually leads. So if you can switch your dog's diet to home cooked or a raw food diet, you'll have the control you want over what goes into your dog's body. And if for whatever reason you can't feed your dog these diets, I fully recommend you feed your dog a healthier kibble diet to really help cut down on all the additives in kibble, fix up chronic ill health conditions and boost your dog's immune system to prevent cancer down the line. Feeding your dog a healthy kibble diet is the key to less oxidative stress, much reduced stress on your dog's liver, natural vitamin and mineral intake, enzyme intake and reducing chronic ill health. And there's little support for dog owners feeding a kibble diet as most help usually comes in the form of a drug or prescription diet that still leaves the underlying cause begging for help. So I developed the healthier kibble diet and have been using it for dogs for many years. It's a great way to introduce whole food supplementation to your dog's current kibble diet without having to change their current feeding routine. You simply add some special extras to the meal before serving to effectively raise the healing power of your dog's immune system to fight off most chronic ill health and prevent the big problems like cancer. It's the diet I wish every kibble fed dog benefited from. I've made it simple, convenient and low cost and it cuts veterinary costs by half year on year. And I'll leave a link in the description below for more on this great low cost solution to the underlying cause of bad dog health and preventing cancer while reducing vet's bills and having a happier dog. It can be a tough ask to rethink your household and yard consumption of the regular products you've been using for years and to really cut back on chemicals entering your dog's body. But if we don't change our practices, it's us and our pets that suffer longer term. Begin freeing your personal world of toxins by looking into the natural alternatives and that way the whole family wins with greater long-term health and longevity. And if you found this video useful, please remember to like it, share it with friends and subscribe so you'll always be up to date on all the latest videos that I do. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye for now.